I am actually reading this book right now. It's called Cash for Tizy. And it is uh, touted as this really uh, amazing um, so it's a copywriting book, but it isn't what you think in terms of a copywriting book. It has no templates. It doesn't have any formulas. It has no quick tips, I would say, and it definitely has no easy hacks. So, so why? Why should I even bother to read this book? Well, what it does do for you is it helps you understand why people do what they do. It helps you understand why people may uh, understand people's decision making process. And it helps you understand why people buy. And it's essentially a, a psychology book about the innate behaviors of why people behave the way they do and act the way they do and uh, behave the way they do and buy the way they do. And knowing that is a foundation for being able to write really good copy. But like I said, there isn't any templates or formulas. And so how do I apply the knowledge from this book? And I'm not gonna be able to apply all of the 100 secrets here today. That is way too much. But what we are gonna do is I wanna give you bang for your buck. And it's in the first chapter. The first chapter, if you can start to apply the skills, which I'm gonna give you a step-by-step -step how I do it right now, break it down, you are gonna automatically start seeing changes um, in your copy, in your conversions, in whatever you do for copywriting, whether it be subject lines, whether it be, um, you know, hooks. Now, there's a little warning about this book. Like I said, there is a hundred uh, tips or, or actually s s the psychology of how hundred kind of ways you can apply copywriting. And by chapter four, it was super overwhelming. My mind was literally exploding. And so I would say this book is more of a book that um, you keep it on your desk and you do the first chapter, you read the first chapter and you try to do it. And then you read the second chapter and you try to do it. There's just so much information that you can go through the whole thing. And I did go through the whole thing, but to be honest, after chapter four, it was all really much, pretty much just this hazy blur. And I just kind of got this, you know, 10,000, 100,000 foot view of, okay, I could do all this. Wow, how am I going to do all this, right? And so I'm here to show you how we're gonna do all of this. First thing is, and this is in the very first chapter, and the most important bang for your buck. If you do this, you will start to see uh, some really amazing conversion rates. Life Force 8, or it's also Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs, which many us have, uh, of us have already heard of and know. And so I'll just go through them super quick because we're gonna just apply these skills right now. First one, survival, enjoyment of life, uh, of life in, enjoyment of life and life extension. Second, enjoyment of food and beverages. Third, freedom from fear, pain, and danger. Fourth, sexual companionship. And that, just so you know, tied into why should you do dancing? That's uh, essentially one of the life force eights. Comfortable living conditions, that's number five. Six, to be superior, winning, and keeping up with the Joneses. Seven, care and protection of loved ones. And eight, social approval. So let's get into the first little exercise. Now in the book, there's this really great example of how he talks about this publishing house uh, was publishing these books. And what they wanted to do was just, of course, sell more books. And they realized they could just change the titles of the books. The entire inside of the book was exactly the same. And so what they did it was they published the book with the original title. They would see how much revenue it would make. And then they would change the titles, applying one of these Life Force 8 principles into the title and see if they could, of course, get more sales. All right, so we're gonna take a look at the old one, at the new one, and which Life Force 8 principle was applied to it. And this is a really great way to kind of get that mind going and it really solidified the concept for me in a very um, real way. The book title was called, the old title, 10 o'clock, and sold for, uh, they made revenue of about $2,000. The new title was, what art should mean to you, $9,000. And the life force that it affected was life for a social approval. So essentially wanting to be, uh, you know, with your friends and be able to talk about art and not feel left out and feel like the idiot in the room, right? That's a very strong, convincing reason. 
<laughs> uh, convincing title. Now the old title, Fleece of Gold, and this should be pretty easy. Uh, the new one, Quest for a Blonde Mistress. I think many of us can figure this one out without even really thinking too much about it. And that's sexual companionship number four. And if you look at the revenue jump, amazing from 5,000 at Fleece of Gold, 10 nines more, 50,000 was with the new title. Old title, Art of Controversy. New title, How to Argue Logically. So this is again, Art of Controversy, How to Argue Logically. Very, very similar, but look, Art of Controversy, no sales. Argue logically, 30,000. Life force affected, number six, superiority, right? Being able to argue better than your neighbor, keeping up with the Joneses, winning. Old Casanova and his lovers. And I put this one in because they're actually quite similar. And it's very interesting how just a small tweak can change it just quite a bit. And that was $8,000. And with the new title, Casanova, History's Greatest Lover, 22,000. Um, you know, the title is very, very similar, but you can see the difference there between Casanova and his lovers and Casanova, history's greatest lover. And that is number four, again, sexual companionship. Sorry, my little thing's blocking it there. So that we've kind of got the brain working. Now, how do I do this, use this for my hooks? And I've spoken about this time and time again. Hooks are super important. Uh, your content is, of course, important, but if you can't get people to stop, that's on the first line. Even if you do video, if you don't have a hook that's going to make people stop, then they're not going to even consume your content. So your first step when you're creating any kind of content is put 80% of the time into your hook. Yes, you got to write the rest, of course, and it should be fairly good. But the hook is the most important. And we're going to do this right now. Bang for your buck. We're going to get you some hooks that are going to really start converting and getting people to stop. So what, what I do is what I'm ready, uh, I usually actually write out the body of the content all first. I write the hook last, just so you know. I'm not going to get into how I do the content, but I write out the content first, and then I do the hook last. And then I set a timer, and I write a hook for uh, three minutes, and I write 10 hooks as fast as possible. I don't think about these Life Force 8s or anything. I just bang out 10 or more hooks. They can be terrible. What's a hook? For me, hook is one sentence. So I'm banging about with 10 different sentences here. And like I said, three minutes, I set a timer. Um, then after I've done my hooks and I'll come up with some, let me actually um, go through, actually, let's go through all the steps and then I'll go through a little quick example with you. Then I, after I have my list of hooks, I choose one hook that I think will um, work quite well. You, you kind of, when you read them, you kind of feel like, yeah, one of these could work. And you look at also the Life Force 8 and you try to match one. Now, you'll notice sometimes there's kind of this overlapping that it could be Life Force 3 and Life Force 8, but one will be stronger. So don't try to blend. Blend is a bit more advanced for now for this exercise. Just choose one, okay? Choose one Life Force that you really want to try to implement into your hook. And then what you're going to do is from that one that you've chosen, you're going to rewrite that one only, right? So you're going to discard the first nine and focus on getting that one really good, right? And you're going to rift on that one for three minutes. And at the, when you're rifting on that one for three minutes, you're going to keep in mind the life force eight, okay? That is the most important, the one that you have chosen. Then I always write down even if it's not relevant to anybody else, I write it down at the end, which Life Force 8 I, yo I ended up using or which one I had. So it's kind of there. So when I go back, it's in my notes. And um, I kind of look at the old and the new together. And this is, you know, something that we can kind of do and work through together. So I'm going to write 10 hooks. I've already written 10, actually. And um, it's around creating content, essentially. So these are the 10 I came up in three minutes. Okay, these are rather terrible. I'm not going to lie, right? So here we go. First one, how to create a content matrix. Create this social media calendar in 30 minutes. Brainstorm a month's worth of content in 30 minutes. How to generate 50 plus ideas in under 30 minutes. How to generate 50 plus ideas create a year's worth of content, how to rapidly generate ideas for social media or social content, 
what to talk about when you don't know what to talk about with your audience, how to generate ideas fast, right? So that's what I had generated in about three minutes time and they were all rather terrible. Now, the Life Force 8 that I'm going to use on this one is number six, to be superior. Winning, keeping up with the Joneses, right? Because what you want to kind of do is essentially create content faster, better than everybody else. That's essentially the nature of this particular one. Let me move this here back to here. So here we go. So what it, what could be some uh, variants on this one is, uh, let's see. So keeping up with the Jones is, I, I didn't actually write the, the Life Force Eight down. I'm going to just do it off the top of my head is um, keeping up with the Joneses. Okay. Uh, I like the one actually, what to talk about when you don't know, uh, when you don't know your audience. Um, should I do that one? No, actually, let's do how to ge rapidly generate ideas uh, for social. That's a pretty generic one. Okay, we'll do that one. So of all the ones I read through, I'm going to only rift on how to rapidly generate ideas for social content, right? Keeping up with the Joneses. So you're going to, let's see, let's see here. Be superior. Okay. Um, uh, Outpace your competition by generating 50 ideas oh, in 30 minutes. Um, generate more ideas for content for your audience um, in under an hour. <laughs> so I always kind of go with a very specific time and kind of also how, how you're going to do it. Um, because I'm trying to imply that I'm going to be able to show you how to do it quicker, faster, better than somebody else. Right. So, um, let me see. Um, yeah. Generate 50 plus ideas in under 30 minutes. Uh, actually let's say this, not just generate ideas, but generate, uh, 50 plus ideas that your audience can't wait to consume something like that so that's uh, so i'm essentially riffing on that as much as i can to try to do that then the next step like i said was uh, uh um let me see here i think that was the last step wasn't it yes and so then i would write down the life force eight and just to let you know that this is really fun to do it's really great to do this with a group of people. So it's a bit hard because I'm a bit by myself, but normally how I would do this is we would all do the exercise uh, and generate, uh, doesn't matter what your own content title is, they're hooks anyways, you would generate 10 ideas, you would pick one and in the room, everybody would actually help you to write hooks for it for three minutes and they would, pick the life force eight they think appropriate. They don't have to pick, you don't have to disclose that. It's actually more interesting because you'll see people using different kind of life force eights and how they actually spin it. And then that helps to generate all these really amazing hooks and gets you really cranking through. Now, if you want to do this together with me, and I would love to have you do this together with me in real time, I would love to put together a little workshop in my private community, it's free. Uh, it's a very safe space to be. And if you actually have questions about this presentation, I invite you to come to my community and put your questions there so that you uh, have a safe place to share or put some comments and questions down below. And I'm very happy to share that with you. But this is essentially my process for how I do hooks. And as you see, I don't take very much time to do them. It's three minutes and three minutes. And then I actually do do one more step, which is um, the secondary wants, which is a little bit of a bonus. We are coming down to the last minute. So I want to be quick on this. So on top of the eight, there are actually these nine secondary wants. And they are essentially the next level. So if once you've written the hook with the eight life force eight, I write for another three minutes, trying to use two or three of these secondary wants and work them through it. Well, like I said, it's really fun to do this in a group of like three to five people. We can really practice some really great hooks and get you some really great hooks for your upcoming content. And it allows you to become, start to become a master. And we begin to start our path of being a, like a little Yoda, you know, uh, 
getting people to um, engage with us, listen with us, and, and be with us. And so I really do hope that this teardown that I did for you today um, helps you to uh, start on your journey to copywriting. I am sort of embarking on this journey, and I will be sharing a lot of things like this right at 30 minutes. And so till next time, I will see you then. I'll put my community down below. And uh, next week, we have some fun guests. See you then.